God bless you and welcome to another episode of The Bible Says This, What Say You? I'm Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. and I'm excited to talk to you today from the Word of God. The Bible says in Psalms 33, verse 4 and the A clause, for the Word of the Lord is right. Hallelujah. The Bible is right. The word of the God of the Bible, it's right. And let me tell you something, my friends, it's right every time and it's right all of the time. Another passage I want to just read to you, if you'll allow me to, the Bible says this about uh, the truth of God. It says in Psalms 119 and verse 89, forever. O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So that means the Bible is not right for just six months. The Bible is not right for just two or three years. Or the Bible, the, the truth of God's word is not extended to, oh, maybe the 18th century or the 17th century or back in the day when the Bible was first put together, the 15th century, 16th century, and so forth. No, the Bible is right in 2015. The Bible is right 2016 the Bible is right throughout eternity the Bible says this about God's truth in Psalms 100 and verse um, 5 it says for the Lord is good and his mercy thank God is everlasting and listen to this and his truth endureth to all generations what is that saying that means the truth of God is, is, is true. It was truth for my mother's generation. It was truth for my mother's mother's generation. It was truth for great, great, great grandpa's generation. It was truth of when this country was formed. It was truth before the country was formed. It was truth then and it's truth today and it will be truth tomorrow. The Lord said uh, in, in uh, St. John's Gospel uh, at, during the Lord's uh, uh, priestly prayer in the 17th chapter, the Lord says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Thank God for the truth of the scriptures and the authenticity of the Bible. And my friends, you are listening to a man who believes in the inerrancy of scripture. And I believe with all of my heart, I am convinced that the Bible is the inerrant, infallible, written word of God. And that it is the only inerrant, infallible, written word of God. And I celebrate the word of the Lord today. Now, I believe that all of the Bible is the word of God. Do you remember when the Lord was dealing with the prophet Ezekiel? Uh, in Ezekiel chapter 2, the Bible says in, uh, in verse 9, it says, um, And when I looked, I will just read this to you, Behold, a hand was set unto me, and lo, a roll or a scroll of a book was therein. And he says, and he spread it before me, and it was written within and without. That is, it was written on both sides of the, the papyrus, the Egyptian papyrus, the, the paper at the time. And there was written therein, look at this, lamentations and mournings and woe. Chapter 3 says, moreover, he said unto me, son of man, eat thou Eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. What was God telling uh, the prophet Ezekiel? Eat the whole roll. Eat both sides of the scroll. Digest the word of God and then go preach the word to my people. So I opened my mouth, Ezekiel said, and, and he calls me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat. Look at this. And fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then I did eat it, the prophet says, and it was in my mouth as honey 
for sweetness. <laughs> That's the word of God. It's sweet. Uh, David declared in Psalm 19 that the word of God is sweeter than the honey and the honeycomb. As a matter of fact, he talked about how God's word endures forever and how sweet the word is. And my friends, I'll tell you, I find the Bible to just be sweet. I love the word of God. I love preaching it. I love reading it. I love studying it. The Bible teaches in Psalms 19, moreover to be desired uh, is the word of God, God's truth, yea, than gold, yea, than much fine gold sweeter than the honey and the honeycomb. Moreover by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them, God's truth, there is great reward. You want to you wanna live a good life. You want to see good days. You want you want to enjoy your sojourn on this earth. Do you want to turn things around? Do you want your life to be rewarding and meaningful? Do you want to be able to greet each day with a smile? Get through the day. Face each challenge and know that you're going to win and, and learn how to, to function when you win. Learn how to function when you lose. Know that there are lessons in both. Read the Bible. Eat the roll, study the roll, and the word of God will show you how to deal with life's challenges and how to face, praise the Lord, the things that we all have to face. Now, I want to just bring something before you, uh, and it deals with the word of the Lord. And uh, two things, I, I, I'm going to show you something. Uh, first, I, I want to read a passage where... Our, our beloved president made a reference concerning the word of the Lord. And this was back when he was campaigning. This is in 2008. And I, and, and I know what you think. You said, well, Pastor, why uh, are you bringing up Obama uh, in this, President Obama in this? Well, you, you'll see why if you, if, you, if you hang on. Now, listen to this. March 2008, when then-candidate Obama was running for president, the presidency, running for president. He based his support for civil unions upon um, a particular interpretation of the New Testament. Now, we know today that even back in two, 2008, it has been revealed that back in 2008, when he was saying that he was for civil unions, but not for same-sex marriage, that that was not true, that, that his, uh, his handlers and his advisors said to him in 2008, if you come out now uh, and, and, and say that uh, you're for same-sex marriage, and I think the book was written by Isakoff, one of his director at the time. If you say that you are for same-sex marriage, the black community will not get behind that. They're not ready for that. So what he did was he argued that he was for civil unions, which was uh, a lie. And uh, and uh, so he said, but he said he based it on uh, an interpretation in the New Testament. He argued that Jesus' Sermon on the Mount supports, uh, these are his words and not mine, gay civil unions in his own words, and this is a direct quote, I believe in civil unions that allow a same-sex couple to visit each other in a hospital or transfer property to each other. I don't think that it should be called marriage, uh, which we know that that wasn't true. Uh, that wasn't his thinking at the time. But I think that it is a legal right and that they should have that recognized by the state. That is, the rest of us should have to recognize it and it's put into law. If people find that com controversial, he said, then I would just refer them to the Sermon on the Mount, which I think is, in my mind, for my faith, a more central than obscure passage in Romans. That's my view, he said, but we can have a respectful disagreement on that. Now, the passage in Romans that the then uh, Senator Obama called obscure was Romans chapter 1, verse 26 through 27. Well, let me read Romans 1, 26 through 27, and you determine whether or not you would term this particular passage, or for that matter, any passage in the whole roll that God told Ezekiel to eat, obscure, meaningless, unimportant, obscure. 
uh, verse uh, 26 says, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving to themselves that recompense of their error which was me. Now my question to you is, do you believe that this is an obscure passage of scripture? And, uh, and for those of you who are watching today, if you can find an obscure passage in the Bible, which I think the whole Bible is, is uh, important. As a matter of fact, even our Lord said concerning the law, he said in Matthew chapter 5, which by the way, this is part of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 and 17, think not that I am come to destroy the law. He says, I didn't come to abolish the law or the prophets. I am come, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He says, I'm who the law and the prophets was pointing to. I'm the one who Moses was writing about. I'm the one who Daniel, Ezekiel, um, Jeremiah, all of the prophets, Zephaniah, Zechariah, Obadiah, praise the Lord, Habakkuk, you name it, uh, the Psalms. I'm the one that they were all pointing to. They were pointing to uh, uh, me that I'm coming and I'm here not to abolish, not to destroy, but to fulfill. I didn't come to bring it, the law to an end. I come to be the living, walking embodiment of the, the word of the Lord. So, uh, and, and by the way, Jesus said this in the Sermon on the Mount. And the Sermon on the Mount uh, lasts from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, all the way over to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8. Eight. And uh, 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 I can't find anywhere in Matthew's gospel, chapter five through chapter eight. And I've read it, my friends, over and over and over. And I can't find anything in it that supports civil unions, same sex marriage, homosexuality, lesbianism, sexual immorality of any kind, fornication, adultery, bestiality, you name it. I just can't find it in the word of the Lord, in the Sermon on the Mount, because it's not there. So back to my earlier point, please follow me. We got to eat the whole roll and God's truth endures to all generations. We who believe the Bible believe this, even this generation. Come on, Bishop Wooden. This is 2016. I don't care if it's 2030, 2060, 20. 80, the year uh, 3,000, doesn't matter to me. The, the God's truth endures to all generation. Remember, it's settled in heaven. Remember, the word of the Lord is right. There is a tendency, I'm headed somewhere. I'm headed somewhere, you know that I am. There is a tendency to kind of uh, omit passages of scripture that we, 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 we just don't like. And to, to miss out on things. And, and one, of, one of those passages, and, and we don't hear this preached much because it's cloaked into a teaching that is not popular today because we live in a day, we live in the day of the androgyny, the androgynous movement, a day where we believe that the genders are the same. And you know, we, listen, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something that you're going to say. I never thought that I would hear Bishop Wooden say, but I'm going to say it. Bruce Jenner is an easy, soft target to hit. It's easy to hit old Bruce. What is he? Six, seven, six, eight, great big man who, you know, he made a fool of himself. Sexual, facial, facial softening surgeries, had boobs put in, and he walks around in women's clothing and put on uh, women's makeup and uh, had extensions put in or a wig or whatever, <laughs> lipstick. It's a mess, my friends. Looks bad. Those big hands with uh, 
extensions, nails, whatever you call them. I don't know. Uh, those big feet with the toes painted. Ugliest legs on earth for a woman. You know, if, if he's trying to represent a woman, that's because he's a man. And there's some guys who have, you know, nice calves. You know, have guys who have nice quads and all that, you know, stud. It's cool on a guy. The ugliest thing you've ever seen on a woman. But he's an easy target. I tell you, uh, in the church world, we've been trying to practice androgynous, unisex behavior for quite some time. Galatians 3 and 28 says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for all are one in Christ Jesus, and if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heir according to the promise. Now, we have taken this particular passage and others like it to teach the erroneous doctrine that there's no difference in the genders. That what God says to the male, he says to the female, that there's no hierarchy, that there's no uh, 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 differentiating uh, between the roles of men and women in Christianity and that we're all one. And uh, so 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 everything is the same. You know what the Lord says to one. He says to all. Well, if you finish that scripture, he says what I said to one. I said to all watch and pray. And so male and females are to watch and pray. But there are differences. You know, if there are no differences in the genders and in the roles of the genders, then we got to take the book of Titus and just throw the whole thing away. Because Titus writes to uh, the aged men, tells them to be sober. Titus writes to the, to, to the aged women, tell them to teach the younger women. Titus writes to the younger women, and he writes to the younger men, to the young men. And uh, uh, John writes to the old men because they're strong to, uh, and, and, and they're, they're, wise and, and they're wise and they know the way. The young men, because they're strong, the Bible teaches that uh, if a man uh, desires the office of a, a, a bishop, and that word that man is not anthropos, but it's aner, which means a male, he desires a good work. And then it says that he must be the, 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 uh, the husband of one wife. And so we take that particular passage and we flip it on its head or... We do like Obama did, and we, we pretend that these particular passages that highlights the difference in the genders, we, we pretend as though they are obscure. And what we do is we try to ignore them. And I really believe that one of the one of the reasons why we're getting the uh, that one of the reasons that we're getting the Bruce Jenners of this world and we're getting the all of this gender neutral gender uh, uh, blending this androgyny this unisex to use a 70s term androgyny unisex and all this thing is because of all places uh, even the church began to pretend as though uh, when they misinterpret the scripture and what Paul was talking about here in Galatians is the availability of salvation that we're all one in Christ Jesus. When you read it uh, in its context over uh, in Galatians, it's a, it's a powerful, powerful, powerful text. And it, it deals with the law and, and, and uh, of where we are in Christ now. And it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just powerful. And uh, how we're all one in Christ, we're all saved, but at the same time, we are given various uh, assignments. It says, uh, uh, but the scripture, Galatians 3, 22, but the scripture have concluded on all under sin. You see there? The scriptures have concluded all. All under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. We're all sinners. And Jesus died that everyone could be saved. But before faith came, we were kept 
under the law. Shut up, uh, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Look at this. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster and the law was bringing us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. The schoolmasters back in biblical times would literally walk the children to school to make sure no harm came to them. And would, would escort them to the school to, to keep them and to keep them safe. But now that the law has come, we don't need the schoolmaster. So there's neither Jew nor Greek nor bond nor free, nor male nor female. We're all, we thank God Jesus saves us all. But husbands, you have a role. Wives, you have a role. The, the, the role that God gives the husband in, in marriage is different from the role that God gives the wife. Kids, you have a role, but your role is not to be the parent. Parent, you have, we have roles, but our role is not to be the children. God speaks to the genders. The Bible tells us, men, that nature even tells you itself that it is a shame to a man that if his hair is long. And yet a woman's hair is her glory. <laughs> yes, God speaks to the genders. Now, where am I headed? I'm headed to one of the passages that the Lord speaks to the genders that we don't hear preached much. And yet this particular passage, this particular passage, whether the person is aware of it or not, this particular biblical truth brought a famous woman out of a funk. This lady was in such a low that she contemplated suicide. This lady is beautiful, famous, wealthy. She's appeared in movies. She is on the cover, the latest cover of Sports Illustrated magazine. She is a success in her chosen field of endeavor. She, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, she is something. She's Miss Rhonda Rousey. Yes, the MMA fighter, that lady who basically single-handedly defined MMA fighting for women. Now, I'm not, don't, don't confuse the forest for the trees. I'm not endorsing women getting into uh, uh, the octagon and slugging it out. You know, that's not my point. But she, uh, she, she, she's good. She can fight. I tell you what, I wouldn't want to get in a, into a, to a fist fight with, with uh, uh, Ronda Rousey. Uh, but Ronda uh, suffered a loss. Holly Holm defeated Ronda Rousey. Ronda was 12, uh, she's 12 and 1 now, uh, 9 of her uh, bouts, she defeated her opponent by submissions, 3 by knockout. I mean, Ronda Rousey uh, has been a storm, and, and she, listen, she's been, she's been gold for MMA, uh, and they, they love her, and, uh, 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 and, and they're appreciative. I mean, she's a gold mine, but she ran up against Holly Holm, and Holly handedly defeated her. Holly knocked her out, and she didn't just knock her out. She beat her, beat her down pretty good uh, in that particular that, that, that fight. Now, Rhonda went on the Ellen DeGeneres show. I generally refer to Ellen DeGeneres as Ellen Degenerated because uh, her, her lifestyle is a degenerate one. There is no biblical, holy, righteous way. There's no godly way to be a lesbian. There's no godly, there's no biblical sanctioning of same-sex marriage. I do not have a I do not have personal animus for Ellen. I pray for Ellen. I pray that she will get saved and come out of that lesbian lifestyle. She's successful according to the world's success. She has uh, I know that uh, in terms of ratings, I think that she owns 
her spot. And she's probably the most popular woman in daytime. She's probably the second coming of, of the true daytime queen, Oprah Winfrey. So she has a, a blockbuster show and you've made it according to the world's standards if you get on Ellen's show. But back to Rhonda. Rhonda is on Ellen's show and Rhonda describes her thinking after the fight. And Rhonda, after the fight, finds herself in a deep, deep funk. Rhonda is depressed. Rhonda is questioning whether anyone would ever even care about her anymore. Rhonda is questioning uh, what is what is her um, uh, her purpose? If I'm not the champ, if I'm not undefeated, then who and what am I? You know, Rhonda's dad. You may not be aware of this. Rhonda's dad committed suicide when she was a young girl, and according to her own words, she contemplated after this loss suicide. Now, we're going to go to her because we can show you this clip. It's on YouTube. It's out there. You've probably seen it a thousand times. I want you to hear what Miss Rousey said brought her out of her suicidal, depressed funk. I want you to hear what she said in her own words that made her want to live. And I want you to hear uh, Ellen's response to what she said. And keep in mind, Ronda Rousey said this on of all shows. She was not on the 700 Club. She was not on a Christian show. I don't know whether she's a Christian or not. I don't know whether she's read the Bible or not. I don't know anything about this young lady except that she's an MMA fighter. She's a beautiful young lady. I, I, I know nothing else about her. I don't know what her opinions is on the church, on marriage, same-sex marriage, uh, 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 traditional marriage. I don't know what her opinion is on anything. I don't know her opinion on anything. All I know is she said something on Ellen's show that caught my attention. And I noticed this. People who have commented on uh, uh, Rhonda has downplayed. Oh, yeah. I've watched it on CNN. I've watched her. Uh, uh, listened to his and hers. I've listened to uh, uh, First Take and other shows. And, and no one ha has keyed on this. As a matter of fact, you, and, and by the way, when you watch some of these shows, you have to keep in mind that ESPN is owned by Disney. ESPN, uh, uh, Disney is with the LBGT community 100%. And all of the commentators know, all of them know, you better not say anything that may sound like a, 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 a disparaging comment on the LGBT community because you'll lose your job. Oh, yeah. Some of the commentators, you know, they use cuss words and they sound tough. And oh, man, they can call the camera in and make their point And they sound like tough guys. <laughs> Except when it comes to homosexuality and lesbianism, they won't touch it because they know if they do, they're fired. Well, yours truly here. I don't work for Disney. I work for the Lord. And uh, my aim is God's truth. Now. Let's go to this footage and listen to what this powerful lady, this MMA fighter who suffered her first defeat, found, she found herself in a suicidal, depressed funk. And let's hear what she says brought her out. My, honestly, like my thought, I was like, I was like uh, in the medical room and I was like down in the corner, I was sitting in the corner and I was like, what am I anymore if I'm not this? And I was literally sitting there and like thinking about killing myself and then exact second I'm like, I'm nothing. I'm like, what do I do anymore? And no one gives a shit about me anymore without this. And, and um, to be honest, I looked up and I saw my man, Travis was standing there and I was looked up at him and I was just like, I need to have his babies. I need to stay alive. <laughs> That was like, really, that was you need to stay alive. 
What? She said Travis was standing there and she's got tears in her eyes. I need to have his babies. I need to stay alive. Now, why is this mentioned on the Bible says this? What say you? Why have I talked about certain scriptures that we treat uh, like they're obscure? Why go on this diatribe about the church and the androgyny? Why talk about the fact that we need to eat the whole roll and that Jesus even said concerning the, 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 the Old Testament, I didn't come to destroy the law, but I come to fulfill it. Why talk about the fact that the word of God, God's truth endures to all generations? Why bring all this up? Why take so long to get here? Because Ronda Rousey says it was a a biblical truth whether she knows it or not it was a biblical truth that's in a passage of scripture that we don't hear preached much because it's wrapped up in a passage of scriptures that deals with the role of women in the church that deals with the role of men in the church that deals with what the woman can do and can't do and how Paul talks about usurping authority and not usurping authority and we don't like to deal with those scriptures because they these the scriptures divide the genders and they assign roles to the man they assign roles to the woman so we don't hear it preach much but Ronda Rousey said he was standing there I saw my man and she says I got to have his babies. I got to live. What's implied? What's implied in what she said? I'm going to tell you what's implied, and I'm going to tell you what the Bible says, not about what's implied, but what she said. I, I, would, I would argue that when she says, I got to have his babies, if they're not married, I would argue that she said, I'm going to marry this guy someday. That's the implied part. And I want to be a mom to his children. Let's say, okay, she don't plan to marry him, but she wants to have his children. Okay, well, she still, here's a man that she wants to have children for. And the key here that brings the scriptures in is that she wants to have children. The thought of being a mother, the thought of giving birth to a child brought the mighty, rich, famous, wealthy, modern day woman, this woman who is celebrated by the feminists, this woman who is celebrated, uh, she's, she's more than a housewife, she's more than a mother, she's, she's an MMA fighter, she's a champ, she's an example to women, all girls can look up to her. Well, what brought her out of her depression? What brought her out? of suicide, the thought of becoming a mother. Well, what does that have to do with the Bible? Well, I'm glad you asked. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, notwithstanding, I guess this is an obscure passage, notwithstanding she shall be saved, speaking of the woman, in childbearing of all things if they continue in the faith and charity and holiness and sobriety she shall be saved in childbearing now we don't hear this much because this particular passage verse 15 is preceded by um, a verse uh, 11 that says let the woman learn in silence with all subjection but I will not suffer a woman to teach nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was made first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived in the, uh, uh, Adam, Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall uh, be saved in childbearing. So we can get into the other scriptures. Maybe that's another presentation at another time and, and bring to light what Paul was saying. And most certainly God uses women to teach the word. God uses women to preach the word. But there is a order. There is an order. There is an order. And, and it's biblical. It's biblical. It's right here in the scripture. But, but, but the point I want to key on today for this presentation of the Bible says this. What say you? What brought Rhonda Rousey out was the thought of being a mother. 
The second thing I want to bring out is Ellen's response. When she says, I got to have it, I got to live. I got to have his children. I got to live. Looking at that brother, her husband, her boyfriend, the, the, the cool guy who, from what I understand, he's an MMA fighter also. She's at her lowest point. Notice what she does, feminists out there, liberals. Notice what she does, what brings her out. She looks at her man. She didn't look at her partner. She didn't look at her lesbian lover. She didn't look uh, at, a, 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 uh, at some platitude, some Gloria Steinem statement. She looked at her man standing there for her and said, I got to have his babies. I got to make love to him. I got to marry him. That's, that's, that's implied. But even if not, I want to come together. Uh, 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 uh. She didn't want, praise the Lord. She didn't want a vagina. She wanted her man. She wanted, uh, uh, didn't want a dildo, with all due respect. She wanted a real man from the factory. She wanted the spermatose and the egg in her, sperm from him, to connect, to have his babies. And she says this on, a, on, on all platforms. <laughs> it's funny to me. Ellen! She didn't marry, Ellen married to a woman. I think this is her second one. Uh, I, I'm not sure about that. But on Ellen's show, and notice Ellen's response. When she says, I got I to gotta have his children. I, I, I got to live. Tears in her eyes. Ellen says, stunned. But a, a, a good actress. You know, she's on her show. She's got a safe face. Yeah, yeah, you got to live. No, 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 Ellen. No, no, no. She didn't say I got to live. She says, I got to become a mother. That's why I want to live. She shall be saved through childbearing. She says, I want to be a mom. The desire to be a mom. The desire to be a mom. Probably the desire to be a wife and mother. At least the desire to be this man's female companion and a mother to give birth to his children. Brought Ronda Rousey out at her lowest point. What does that say? God's truth endures to all generations. That says the Bible is relevant. Whether she knows that this is what the Bible teaches or not, it's true. It's innate. And when Hollywood, my friends, and the world try to tell us that the Bible is passe, that biblical truth is passe, that the, the traditional truths of the word of God, that's old school, that we don't need that anymore. The truth is, Ronda Rousey said, at her lowest point, that's what brought her out. <laughs> well, the Bible says this. What say you?